Creo Parametric 4.0, Lesson 16. So we are going to create a helical compression spring as the first step in this lesson. So it's a new, I'll just give it a short name here, new part. And I want to make sure all my elements are displayed correctly, including in the model tree. And I might even go and change my selection for a color in the very beginning. See if that took. All right. So we're going to create a helix. But before we do, we want to do some preparation. So file, prepare, model properties. And this is going to be a metric part. So we're going to pick millimeter, set. I always select the second version here. OK close and the last thing is let's go and check our configuration for sketcher and let's reduce the number of decimal places to zero because it is in metric and turn off the grid snap to grid all that's off no and our first feature is going to be the helical sweep And we're going to create an internal sketch, sketching on front datum. And what we want to do is create an axis of revolution. Now, it does say to always go to the center line up here in the ribbon to create this. Don't use the other type. So in other words, we're using this one here. And if you put your cursor over the top, it says center line. Now, it really should say axis of revolution. So we're going to see what happens here. It might have a few variations. I'm going to click here, click here, middle mouse button. And it did not give me the option of having a diameter here. And it does not give me the option of changing it from a radial value to a diameter. So I'm going to go and select on here, right mouse button, designated as the axis of revolution. And now I'm going to click on this. And it still is not giving me that choice. So I'm going to undo this and try the other center line. I'm going to click on it, middle mouse button. And I'm going to click on it again and turn it into the designated axis of revolution. Now it's going to say, you should go and do it up here in this one. But as we see, it didn't work very good. So I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to put in my line. And it is putting in my dimensions. Now, again, I do not have diameter dimensions here. And I, I want them to be radius or diameter. But when I click on this, one of the options now is for it to become a diameter. So I'm going to do that. So that one worked OK. And I think there's just something a little bit different about this compared to doing a revolved feature. Shouldn't be anything different, but there is. So I've got a couple of dimensions in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And they are going to be, I think, 380 by 360 by 180. So I'm going to change them now. So, and I don't want this diameter, I'm sorry, the angle measurement. I'm going to use a straight line from here to the end point as my third dimension. And that third dimension is a 240. So 240 free length. Like so. And you can reposition your dimension values if you want. Get them off the sketch part. All right, so these are the only three dimensions I need. I'm going to go into the standard view. And when I check here, it's going to have all this grayed out. I need to resume the command. And you can see here's my set the pitch at 24. I think it's supposed to be 40. And I'm going to select the sweep section. 
and right mouse button circle and right at this position here I'm going to draw a circle. If I put it into 2D it's the same thing. Okay. And this is the wire diameter and I think that's supposed to be 15. Check. Control D to see it and there's my helical sweep. Now, the first version of this, we are going to cut the top and the bottom to make it ground ends, to make it flat. So let's go and put it into standard view just to take a look at it. And we want to cut off the top and the bottom, just trim it so that it's flat. We don't want to have this rounded portion. So let's start off by making a cut, extrude, remove material, and we are going to select the statum plane here. I'm going to go into 2D, and you could turn it as per the book, but basically all we're doing here is drawing one line to use as a cut, and it's going to lock in here, and you need to make it long enough so it goes beyond. You could actually write a relation to control this. But right now, all you're really trying to do is get this to cut through this portion. Turn it, take a look at it, and see what happens. Check. Now, nothing's going on. How about if we click this way? How about if we click this way? All right. So you can see we want to drag that line, but we really want it to go through all on both sides. And there's no doubt of what it's removing. And there's our first ground end. Now, the one on the other side, let's do the same extrude, remove material, define internal sketch, and we'll use previous. In this case here, we're going to be coming on the other on the other end here, and we want to create a line. It's kind of hard to see where the line's going to go. It might not lock into there, right? So we can put it anywhere, extend it out, and the dimension here is obviously important. And I think it's supposed to be 240. And that's going to be the cut on this end. This line here doesn't make any difference where it is as long as it extends beyond the, 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 uh, the spring. And again, you might want to write a relationship to always make it larger than whatever the half of this diameter is. Turn it. Check. And again, if we click a few times here, we'll see what happens. It's not so good. Click up. How about through all both sides? And there's my slice from the top here. Check. Standard. Doesn't look my like my uh, color took. Now it did. And there's my first part of creating a compression spring. We will also get rid of these flats in the next section and take the ground ends off and put some hooks in instead.